Hi friends, how's it going? Hi, I'm so excited to see you guys. All right, let's get this party started. So I am Hot Mess Express over here and put this, what I thought was a pretty badass presentation for you guys together yesterday. And my internet went out halfway. So half of my images are missing, which I'm so bummed about, but we're gonna rally through and make this um, a super helpful call for you guys. So I'm really excited to have you here. Thank you for taking your time on a Monday night to hop on. I really appreciate that. And it shows your dedication to your business, man. It shows that you're taking this seriously. And I think that that is like primary, you know, like we've got to take this seriously in order for others to take this seriously. So I commend you for being here. Um, I would love for you to be a little interactive with me on this call because I get a little nervous about public speaking. And the more that you guys are like on, on with me, I feel your energy and it helps me give what I can give to you guys. So drop in the comments for me how long you've been a coach. So how long when your you know, start month, start year was, start date, Drop that below. I'll let you guys start to like populate that in. And then, cool, March 1st, a couple days ago. Oh, Madison. Um, okay, and now I want you to tell me what your actual day one is as a coach. Because there are many, many of us, myself included, that we have our sign up date, like the date that we submitted that paperwork. And then we have the date that we actually dug our toes in, like drew the line in the sand and said, this is when I am doing this. I'm starting this business and I'm going to go all in on this business. So if that's different for you, drop that below too, because I want to know. And I want to congratulate the hell out of you because this is it, girl. We doing this. We doing this. Okay. So what I'm going to talk to you about tonight is the engine of your business. Like everything that I'm going to talk to you about in terms of the vital behaviors, personal development, power hours, power pockets, this is with, without this, you don't have a business. This is your business. Um, so it's really important. And if you do these things for long enough, you're going to succeed here. The ticket is time. So my business mentor shared, I'm very like sciencey, like scientific in my brain. And he shared this kind of, um, uh, Oh my God, this, this thing with me, I'm, the words are evading me, but basically it's consistency plus intensity plus time equals success. I want you guys to write that down. So consistency plus intensity plus time equals success. And if you guys can harness those three things, you will not fail here. You will not fail. Um, okay, so who did the homework? Did any of you guys do the homework and share what the biggest reason is why you want to be successful here? Do you know, I see your face. You're like literally the person on my screen right now. You're like, ah! Don't worry. <laughs> this isn't like pop quiz or anything. Um, I want you guys, if you didn't do it, just to kind of think about what is the one biggest reason why you want to succeed as a coach. And there are no wrong answers here. Um, I'm going to be totally honest with you. For me, when I started, it was straight up that I wanted to prove to myself that I could do it. I wanted to prove to me that I could do this. And I was hell bent on that like hell bent on that. Um, but okay, so before we get started, A, let me share my screen with you and hopefully we can get some of, at least some of these, uh, this beautifulness that I did for you guys. Um, okay, present, present. All right, you guys can see that, right? And you can still hear me. Woo, okay. So obviously today we're talking about what to do as a coach to hit your business basic um, goals. Let me move that over. All right. And for those of you that don't know me, I'm Alicia. So I'm Alicia Ryan. Uh, my team is Life Tribe. I have been a coach since, well, my registration date was August of 2015, but really my like line in the sand was January of 2019. So um, I currently am a three-star diamond coach in my first CBC. I'm a diamond coach in my second CBC. I'm a success club legend. I've hit success club like 65 months in a row or something like that. Um, and basically, so my story with coaching is that I was the super hater. I was like, major beach body hater. Um, through my, I, I have, P, I have PCOS. So I was constantly struggling with my weight. I was always yo-yoing with my weight in my, in the past. 
Um, this would, and I do think that this goes hand in hand with PCOS, but I was experiencing extreme depression, like a lot of mood, like not stabilized with my mood. Uh, this was through my teens. This was through my early twenties through college. Um, it got really bad for me for a while through my twenties. Um, I was, I, but I was the, like the social butterfly. Like I was the one who was always trying to like put on a happy face and like go try to be happy with my friends, you know, and just kind of go with the flow and fit in with everybody at the expense of really even being brave enough or curious enough to like know myself a little bit better. And I mean, you know, we're in our twenties, like it's an evolution for sure, but I was just struggling really hard. So in my twenties in college, I just a brief background. And for those of you guys that don't know me or follow me, I am really, really big on mental health. Mental health is the reason why I'm here, why I'm a coach for myself and for people out there who may be sh struggling in a similar way that I was um, and that I still battle to this day. Um, I was diagnosed with depression when I was 17. I went off to college. Um, I had my first suicide attempt my sophomore year of college. It was incredibly difficult. I ended up somehow rallying, finishing out school. I had I was an A student, like 4.0 plus weighted GPA in high school, and I was crumbling through my college years. Um, I didn't know myself. I my confidence was shit. Um, I just I, I was it was at my rock bottom. Somehow I graduated. I have no freaking idea how. And I got out into the real world and things didn't get easier for me. Um, on paper, it looked like it did. So I immediately picked up a job out of college as a neurophysiologist. They trained me right out of school. Um, it's something now that you really have to be grandfathered in unless you've had like specific education. So I got really lucky there, but I was, I was drowning. I had my second suicide attempt about a year into uh, my job in neurosurgery there as a neurophysiologist. And it was at that time that I kind of, you know, <laughs> those are big things, you know, to happen. So it was like, I got to question my life here. Like, I, I can't keep going down this path. Like, I can't, there's, there was some little piece inside of me that was just like, you, as hopeless as you feel and as down in the dumps as you are right now, there was like this little light, like in the darkness that was like, there is something out there for you and you have to try, like you have to try. And I didn't know what it was. Um, I grew up to, uh, I grew up in New York to a conservative family. So my family, A, we did not air our dirty laundry. So sharing on social media was a huge thing for me once I became a coach. And, you know, growing up to a family like that, I was expected to check the boxes. You know, I was expected to go to college. I was expected to get good grades. I was expected to get a good job coming out. Um, I was expected to get married, have kids, you know, like the whole progression that is expected in our society typically. Um, and, you know, I remember very clearly my dad saying to me one day, he was like, Alicia, nobody likes their job. Keep your head down and do your job just get through it, do it because that's what the rest of us are doing. And I remember thinking at that moment, like, I mean, I love my parents, you know, and I trusted them, but I was like, this can't be this, this just can't be life, you know? Um, Anyway, so before I was a coach and going through all of this, like as a neurophysiologist, I really like you know, I, if I haven't made it clear already, I had no confidence, you guys, like severely lacking in confidence, really trying to be like this chameleon and fitting in with the crowd. Um, I was so far from being a leader that I, I like cannot, I can't even do, do justice to sharing with you how far I was from that. Um, and I've always been average my whole life but I have always been a very hard worker. That was something that, you know, those box checks that my parents instilled in me early on, that was part of that, that they instilled in me was to work hard. And I am, I'm a hard worker. I will outwork anybody, you know, to like, and, you know, it, early on, it was, it was not for the best of reasons. It was because I wanted, I was hustling for approval and I was um, trying to prove to others. So when coaching fell on my lap and it was something that, 
A, you know, I could see the value of a, what it did for my life, but also what it could possibly do for other people's lives. I was like, I was like, I can get behind this, you know, like, and I can, I can hustle for this. I can do this. So I had all the fears, you know, I, all of the, what will people think about me? It was extreme for me. Um, but I've always also had this little bit of like rebellious kind of like, fuck them attitude. Sorry if you have like kids around, but that was like, that's always been a little bit in my, in my soul. So I, I was, I was the underdog trying to prove something and it, what started as wanting to prove it to other people ended up being me. Like I needed to prove this to me. And it was my journey through, you know, of gaining my own confidence of gaining my own physical health, my own mental health to make this work for me, you know, to really like give my all to this and see what I could create from this. So, um, you know, it was messy in the beginning. It was incredibly messy. I had no freaking idea what I was doing. Um, but you know, my first couple years as a coach, like 2016 to 2019, I was hitting success club. I was hitting like SC five, but I was a hot mess. I was a hot mess. I had no tracking systems. I, people were falling through the cracks. Like I, I, it's a miracle. I made it as far as I did. And I was expending so much work and time and energy just to like, feel like I could make it to the next month again. Like I was constantly like, am I going to hit success level in this next month? Like stressing out about it. And, you know, it's, it's a, it's a journey for all of us. There is no coaching school. You know, we have, nobody can go to college for coaching, but we do have these trainings, which is super helpful. Um, and then I will say the moment, the real like line in the sand moment where I say it's like when I signed up versus when I started coaching, it was when I decided like Alicia, you have to treat this like a business if you want this to pay you like a business and feel like a business. Like I had to develop systems. I had to develop ways to track. I had to develop some kind of routine for myself every day that, that were based on the income producing activities that we do. So I was actually producing income because, you know, the reality here is that we all, we want to help people. We wouldn't be here if we didn't want to help people, but we also want to make money doing that because the tr the fact of the matter is that if we're paid to do this, we're able to give more of ourselves to what we really want to do, which is help people, you know? So what I'm going to do here tonight is walk you through exactly how to spend your time, exactly the things that you should be doing um, on a daily basis and building some kind of like consistency train for yourself to get the wheels rolling on your business, to build some momentum in your business. So let's move on. Okay. So here's the deal. This is not a microwave business. It's a slow cooker business. So in your head right now, what I want you guys to really, really commit to in your hearts, you know, if you really want this, all of those reasons that you shared with me about why this is important to you, I want you to commit to being here like right now on this call, like commit to being here, like give me some movement, give me some like jump up and down, like give me some yes, commit to being here, give your best to this, give the best of what you've got to this and do this, give this, give yourself to this for a full year. You have to give yourself to this for enough time for it to manifest into something and be committed to picking yourself back up when it inevitably gets hard. You know, when the, when your kids are freaking like sick and screaming, when somebody in your family has COVID, you know, when your job, there's a lot of pressure at work or when you've got family in town for the holidays or you're moving or whatever else, you know, like, Follow through on the promise that you made to yourself to be here for a full freaking year, because I guarantee you, if you can fight through those hard times and those hard times are never going to stop, we know with our health and fitness journey, we know those hard days come. We don't want to do our workout. You know, we don't want to finish the program. We don't want to eat healthy in the day, uh, in, a, in a day, you know, if there's like, I don't know, donuts in the break room or whatever, but when we commit to a program, we build discipline. When we commit to our business, we build discipline. And those two things go hand in hand and they build our discipline muscle. So are you ready? Are you ready to commit with me? You in? A year. Say, I will be here in a year. I want you guys to write to, to do that in the comments. I will be here in a year. Okay. 
Let's do this. So hard work is going to trump talent every time. I'm telling you guys that there are very, very few people who come into this business that are like social media influencers already. And they're like really good at sales and like all this other stuff. Like, um, no, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I am like, I was like scaredy girl, no confidence, came from healthcare, hated sales, literally made my skin crawl. Um, didn't want people to think badly of me. I was like, I, if there was anybody less cut out to do this, I would be hard pressed to find them because I was none of those things. And I am going to tell you because I am a, a, I'm a, an example of this. Hard work trumps talent. Hard work will always trump talent. So a couple of stories that I just want to share with you quickly. Michael Jordan, he was not spectacular. He was not this like incredible athlete from the get-go. He was cut from his varsity team and he was he was brought down to JV to develop in his early years. He spent his summers taking hundreds of jump shots every day because it was his weak point. He did this over and over and over again for decades, you guys, decades. Um, the GM CEO, Mary Barra, and I love like the underdog women here, like the underdog women that rise up, you know? Mary Barra became a CEO at GM after 35 years at the company. She started when she was 18 years old in a in a entry level role and worked her way up 35 years she worked for that um the pepsi ceo she worked the graveyard shift she worked 12 p.m until 5 a.m as a receptionist while she was putting herself through yale think about that she is putting herself through yale studying through yale and working a 12 to 5 shift to, just to get herself through um, became the ceo of pepsi and then kobe so the, this kobe story i love so kobe broke his finger and it could have been the end of his season, like maybe his career, who knows? He ended up completely changing his shooting technique to be able to play through it, to move through it. He found another way, he pivoted, he pivoted. And I want you to, guys to write that word down, pivot. Always be willing to pivot in this business. Um, what do all these people have in common? They're determined, they're disciplined, they're problem solving, they're hell bent on what they want. And those are the key factors of success. You know, that is what makes a person successful. Can you dig into those things? Can you find those things somewhere in your soul and apply them to places where you're already working in your workouts, with your family, with your nutrition? Can you find that within you and dig it out? Because I guarantee you, if you can dig it out in some place, it's going to be easier for you to dig out in this place. So if you can, I can teach you exactly how to apply those things. And I'm also going to teach you how to work that muscle. So there is no secret in coaching. Um, we as coaches, and this is something that was handed down to us from corporate, there it's the, the four things, the four pillars that we focus on as coaches are called the four vital behaviors. Can you guys see on the right-hand side here or is it blocking the screen? You can see? Okay, good. Because I just see your beautiful faces. Okay, so, all right. So four vital behaviors. Basically how these came about is because corporate was like, all right, top. 0.0001% leaders, what the hell are you guys doing every day? And they pulled exactly what they were doing and they created this list and they shared it to the entire network. So this is not a secret. This is literally in your back office. You can access this, the four vital behaviors. So number one is get results, get results for yourself. That's with your, that's prove that these products work. So that's with the fitness programs, with the nutrition programs, utilizing the supplements, number one. And that is always your number one. These are in order, you guys, and they're in order for a reason. We need that number one in order to have like the chutzpah to be able to tackle the rest of this stuff in a believable way. Okay, number two is connect, invite, and follow up. These are your income producing activities. Number three is to help other people get results. And I'm going to go into more depth on these, but just a breakdown here. And number four, this is your mind muscle. So reading or listening to PD every day. Okay, let's move on here. Oh, I can already see my pictures are like, oh, this is rough for the re recovering perfectionist in me. Okay, so getting results. So all of these things, one through four, they are about your health and your self-growth primarily. I want you to know that. So getting results for you, this is for your physical health, 
your income producing activities, it's for your business health. Getting others results, it's for your business health and for their physical and mental health. And then reading and listening to PD, it's for your mental health and your self growth. And honestly and truly, I do believe that number four, like listening to PD, that has probably provided me the most benefit as a coach as a human being in my life. So like, I'll talk more about that, but don't skip that. And I'm going to tell you too, that if you really want to make something of yourself here, don't skip any of these, all four of these together simultaneously are going to contribute to your success in this business. All right. Ah, it's such great before and afters, you guys, this is such a bummer. Okay. So number one, this is the first vital behavior. Let me go into like the nitty gritty here, get results, get results. Everything here in your business starts with you and your credibility and you proving to others that this really does work, <laughs> you know, that you are not like selling snake oil out here, that you are actually providing something to somebody that can change their life because you have experienced that. Um, this is your, this is your foundation for your business. So if you ever feel like you're kind of like blah, or you're not super excited, my like number one top tip is to go all the way the heck in on your own journey, your own fitness and nutrition journey, um, and find a way to get pumped about that. Either do a program that you've never done or do a program that, you know, really, really lights you up, you know, um, try a new nutrition, try portion fix. If you're not really a portion fix girl, try to be, if you're not really a to be girl, um, play with the intermittent fasting that's available now, you know, find new ways to engage with all of the goodness that Beachbody gives us so that you can get reignited, you can get yourself results and you, that can authentically spew from you, you know, that can be authentically be felt by other people. Um, it'll build your confidence and it'll build your trust with your audience. And this is it. This is like foundation of your business. Um, I wish I could show you some of these before and afters because you know how I said, like, our business is not a microwave business. It's a slow cooker business. A lot of these before and afters on here took years to get. They took years to get. And I know you're saying to me, well, Alicia, you just said that this is number one. I need this to happen in order for everything else to happen. And here's the deal, like, small changes, you know, small changes are, and small changes that are shared are way more relatable and believable to people than the big before and after. And not to say that like you shouldn't shoot for the big before and after, but the weekly, the weekly before and after, and not just physically, not just like a before on Sunday and an after on Saturday, you know, mentally, like how did you feel before you like kicked off this new start for yourself? What did your family, how would, did your family see a shift in you? Did your friends see a shift in you? Um, how did your, how did your guts feel? How did your brain feel, you know, really share that kind of stuff and how it is actually impacting your life, you know, and take an inventory of that just for yourself too. That's important to kind of check in on and know, um, but slow cooker, it takes time, you know? So the, what we do in, you know, in this business, in our health and fitness, in life, we do the best we can, you know, we do the best we can. We give it our all. We will fall. We're human. Mis we make mistakes. Things happen. Life happens, but it's all about the rebound. You guys, it's all about how quickly can you get yourself back up from the inevitable tough that happens in life? You know, how quickly can you rally? Because that's your superpower. That's your superpower right there in life, in business, in your health and fitness. Okay. Number two, the second vital behavior is connect invite and follow up. And these are your IPAs. So IPAs are income producing activities. This is what is actually going to make you money in this business. And this is the unsexy work. This is the stuff that nobody wants to do. <laughs> this is the stuff that is like, feels like pulling teeth on a day-to-day -day basis sometimes. Um, here's my recommendation as I like go through these for you guys. And obviously you can read too. A, small chunks of time. The more time you spend on any one of these, the less likely you're going to be to show up to do it again the next day. So if you're like, I was on a roll, I sent like 50 invites on Monday. And then Tuesday, you're like, that was really kind of hard. And it took a lot of time and I have other stuff to do. Maybe I'll just try again Wednesday. And then Wednesday, you're like, well, I got so much done on Monday. Why do I really need to do it again on Wednesday? And then Thursday comes and you're doing whatever you get caught up in life. Next thing you know, you haven't done anything for a full week. And that's not 
that's not like running a business, you know, that's, it's all about consistency, right? So small chunks and you can build on that, but make sure that like what you're biting off, it becomes manageable before you add more to it because consistency will trump like doing all the things all at once. It'll also help you prevent burnout. Um, so here's my recommendation to you, 10 minutes a day on each of these things. So we as coaches talk a lot about power hours. So basically what power hours are, are like a 60 minute Zoom or a 60 minute just time chunk that you create for yourself where you bust out your IPAs. You just sit down, you put your head down. Thank you, Frank Fusco. <laughs> put your head down and you bust out your IPAs, you know? Um, if you're on an actual power hour, so Beachbody Champions does a lot of power hours a lot. If you're not part of that Facebook group, go hop over in there. Um, occasionally, we in Beatnik will like put together some monthly power hours if there's like a, a calling for it, if people really want it. Um, you could do it with your team, like talk to your coach, talk to any of your coaches on your team and see if they want to rally and get on a power hour with you guys for when it works. Um, on a zoom and that's straight up just an hour on a zoom working together, you know, um, where you guys hold each other accountable, similar, similar to like our virtual gym. Um, I highly do recommend jumping on those beach body champions power hours because those guided power hours are like money. If you're really trying to like get into a groove and just like rip the bandaid and do it. So really quick, six things, six things are your IPAs. And this is an order of most important in my opinion. So I might, I don't know, like how the other coaches feel about this is this is my order of importance so number one invite if you're not inviting you don't have anybody joining you like that's just fact of the matter there is probably there are probably like of the over ten thousand people i've invited over the last seven years maybe like 10 have reached out to me maybe maybe got to invite like inviting is your business so invite at least five a day to a group or learn about coaching my recommendation with inviting is as you're like scrolling facebook and you see somebody if you're not going to invite them right that second put them in the notes section of your phone keep track of your people um that's just showing that you care about your job it's not being like sketchy or whatever else it's just showing that you care about your job to track people um that's number one number two in order of importance is to do your social media posts for the day so um i use instagram and facebook you can use whatever you know social media platforms you want i know pe some people that you know work uh heavier in real life you know but here's the here's the deal we can impact more people if we are showing up truthfully openly and reliably and consistency on social media um, so every day do your post. Um, if you need ideas for posts, I actually put up a calendar not too long ago in Beatnik. So search the gallery there and there are daily ideas for you. Um, or you can, what I tell my newer coaches to do is use it as like your accountability journal, you know, like just your daily, like how you're feeling. Did you do your workout? Like talk about nutrition one day, um, hit on like how it fit into your life. Another day, talk about like how you're fitting coaching in, like hopping on one of these calls or something like that. Um, equal parts, like how this is fitting into your life and your life, you know, like who you were before Beachbody too. Don't let that go to the wayside. Okay. Number three, update your stories. Stories are huge because they give people like a real life um, like, like a voyeur kind of like looking at you, you know, like it's, it, it's kind of sketchy. <laughs> it is a little bit if you think about it when you have like 200 random people, like checking out your stories, but this is how, you know, here in coaching, we've met some of our closest friends, you know, we meet our people. So it's how people get an inside peek into like what you're really about, you know, who you really are, let them hear your voice, let them see your life, you know? Um, and I'm not saying like, if you're going through shit to be like giving them the play by play, but like, you know, the random funny stuff that happens during the day, try to remind yourself to catch it, you know, do, um, some clips of your energized, do uh, share your Shakeology recipe, share what real food you're eating during the day, um, put up polls about like different things, like let people vote on things. People love to give their opinions. I actually have a list for you guys here and like a couple slides of exactly what to kind of share on your stories every day. So that's coming. So those three, make them non-negotiable every day. Just hands down those three are like your biggest things and those will move your business forward. Four, five, and six, 
you want to do fairly frequently, but one, two, and three, I think is like so super important. Um, four, follow up with the people you've invited. And in order to easily follow up with the people you've invited, you got to write their names down somewhere. You got to keep track of them somewhere. So make sure that you're doing that in a way that makes sense for you. If you're pen and paper, just straight up grab a notebook. I, you should see all the notebooks that I have in my home. Um, if you're like a, uh, a computer -y kind of person, Streak is great to use. Teamsy is another one that a lot of people use. So Google those, do some research into that. Um, I'm not super familiar with them because like I said, I'm a pen and paper person. Okay, number five, go into your social media and respond to all your new likes all your comments, all your views. So the way that I do this is anybody who likes my posts, I make sure that I'm following them and I've just given a quick reach out. Like, hey, I'm Alicia. I struggled a lot with like my weight and my past and depression. I'm really excited to have you here through the ride of life. That's it. You know, I do a quick like, hey, that's how I respond to all my new likes. All new comments, I make some kind of comment. I, I like it and then I make a comment on my comment. Um, views, I do exactly what I do with my likes. I just kind of reach out and periodically I'll go through and just kind of like engage with other people, you know, like their stories. But I set a timer because it's really easy to get sucked into the social media, you know, you know, you know. So set a timer. Okay. And the last one is to add followers, like add followers to your network. Um, don't take it personally. If people are not into you, they're just not your people, you know, and keep putting your heart and your soul and your vulnerability out there to find your people. And you do that by adding followers to your network. So um, I don't want this call to get crazy long, but really quickly on adding followers. So basically what you can do is just kind of think about who you are. What are like the top three or five things about you? And then search hashtags along the lines of that. So I am, you know, I struggle with PCOS. So a lot of times I'll search like PC, hashtag PCOS strong, hashtag PCOS warrior. And I'll go in and see what the most popular posts are. I'll look at the photos. And for a photo that like really speaks to me, I'll click on it. I'll make sure that they're not a coach because I'm not a about like poaching other people's people. Um, and I'll just start looking at people's pages and following them and liking them, you know? Um, and I try to do like 50 of those a day. I will say the more you do this stuff, the more efficient you'll become at it. Um, I, I was at the, I was at NLC a couple of years, well, a long time ago, a handful of years ago now. And Keisha Fitzgerald was speaking and she was talking about, um, like almost trying to like beat the clock with yourself with some of these things. So she was like, all right, I was going to set a timer for 20 minutes and try to do 20 invites during that time. And it was like a game for her. You know, she was like, all right, ready, go, like beat the clock. Let's do this kind of thing. So if, you, if you're, you know, motivated by that, can think about it in that way. You'll become more efficient, the more practice you get with it, the more you show up to do it um, and make it fun for yourself too. Cause like you guys know, like energy speaks, you know, I don't know how, but I swear to you, I could send like a very similar message to somebody on a day that I'm feeling like crap versus a day where I'm like, Hey, Hey, let's do it. And people know, like they know. So put on some like gangster rap or something, put on some like Taylor Swift. I don't know. Put on something that like gets you in a good mood, like an up mood and, you know, make it fun for you. Make these unsexy things fun. Cause the more that you can do that, the more that you're going to enjoy your work, you're going to want to do more of it. And you're going to be more successful with what you're doing here. Okay. Um, this is the business activity tracker. So if you've never seen this, it's in your back office. It's also in Beatnik somewhere. I will also post it in there after this call for easy access. Um, this is like a lifeline. <laughs> I highly recommend like printing this out and getting it in your life, even if you just kind of keep it next to you as like a guideline while you're working through. This is also virtual in your back office. So if you log into your back office, um, I am not going to be able to guide you exactly how to get there, but <laughs> use your, use your, um, your smarts, you know, to navigate there. And if you can't find it, just like comment on our thread for tonight, like the post for tonight, and I'll, I'll go in there and I'll give you the instructions on how to get there. Um, but this is the holy grail. Now, listen, if this feels overwhelming, if this feels like, holy shit, Alicia, this is a lot of stuff on here. How am I going to do this every single day? A, know that you're not alone in feeling like that. I think we've all felt like that either just looking at this for the first time or be actually working through it for the first time. So do your best, 
do your best on it. But what I'm going to share with you is kind of a more bare bones version so that you can get your feet underneath you. So this is the bare, bone, bare bones version that I share with my coaches. And basically what this is, is you have your invite little lines here. This is where the names of the people that you're inviting are going to go. After you've followed up with them, you check the box. So their names go there when you've invited them and then check the box after you followed up with them. These here on the right, energize three to five clips of your workout. These are what your stories should be for the day, what your Instagram story should be for the day. Yeah, definitely take a picture of this. Um, and then here's a little box for that you've done your post for the day, your social media post for the day. You've done two new follows. So you followed two new people on, you know, Instagram or, you know, Facebook, whatever, friend of a friend, whatever. And you've engaged with at least three people. So that means that you have done more than just like posted an emoji on somebody's thing. You've had a meaningful comment to somebody's story or to somebody's post. You've done that three with three different people. Super, that's very manageable. This is super manageable. You could probably do this in like, I don't know, 20 minutes for the day. If you were really like, beat the clock, you know, you could, you could do this in 20 minutes. So, and then once, and this is the goal, right? Like you could continue to keep doing this through your coaching journey. Um, and you would very well probably hit success club if you did this every single day, every single day. But if you really want to make something of this business, start to add to it. You know, start to add five more invites a day, start to do 10 more follows a day, start to do 10 more engagements of a day, but do it in a way where you know that you can maintain it, you know, start, start small. You guys get what I'm saying. Um, all or something. So what somebody said to me one time, cause I'm perfect. I'm a recovering perfectionist. I'm very like transparent about that. I'm always like, if I can't do everything, I'm, I don't want to do it. I'm like ultimate procrastinator because I'm the one who, if I don't believe that I can get all the things done, I'm just not even going to do it. I'm just not even going to look at it because I want it to be perfect and I'm not going to touch it. All or something, all or something, my fellow perfectionist friends, all or something. Don't, the entrepreneurship is messy. Being a new business owner is very messy. As long as you are doing something, you are ahead of the person who is not doing anything. It's like that saying, like what that the couch, you're lapping the people on the couch. You guys know, do you know that quote that I'm trying to like give you right now? That's what it's like in this business, you know, all or something, all or something and set timers. Please, please, please. If there's anything you take away from this entire call is to work in chunks and set timers for yourself so that you're not like getting caught up in everything. Okay. Okay. Next is how to support your people, you know, how to help other people get results. So this is about realistic support. You do not have to be a one-on-one -on -one coach, everything to everyone all the time. You will drive yourself bananas doing that. If you can create an environment in your groups that is supportive, where everyone is supporting each other and you're providing the, um, um, certain pieces within there to help people navigate through their fitness program, to help people navigate through nutrition, and you are showing up as well and loving on others, that is enough, my friend. That is enough. Don't drive yourself like batty trying to like spend our conversations with every single one of your challengers every single day. Trust me on this. Realistic support. So three things here that you want to spend five to 10 minutes doing each of these every day. So number one, contribute to your BOD group. So if you're not running a BOD group, definitely do it. You guys just do it. I know like a lot of us are still transitioning from Facebook, but it makes it so simple to run on BOD. You can schedule your posts in advance. There's libraries that you can pick posts from. If you're kind of having like a brain fart moment, you don't know what to post. Um, get, get a daily post up for your BOD group, you know, to inspire them, um, whether it's a topic that you're working through, whether it's a challenge that you're working through that week, um, and then do be your best challenger. Don't forget to be your best challenger because that's really important. You want to set the example for your people. Okay, number two is to recognize somebody else's achievement. So, you know, it doesn't have to be like this person completed that pro this program. Like, yay, that's amazing. And like, let's shout those people out. But it could be like, Julie dropped her, the dropped her meal plan tracker yesterday. And I know that she's fighting for this. Like, let's clap for her. Or, you know, 
Mariah got her workout done yesterday after she worked a 10 hour shift at the hospital. So like see your people and publicly like shout them out at in, in every opportunity that you get, um, that you can feasibly do that. Okay. And number three, you want to spend about five or 10 minutes a day responding to questions from your clients and coaches. So popping in your email, popping in your DMs and a big, big tip that I have for you guys is not to a turn off the notifications on your Facebook messages and on your Instagram messages and work smart in your DM box. Like don't just willy nilly answer messages in there, set aside time each day, set aside 10 minutes each day, you know, to respond to your, these questions from your clients, 10 minutes each day to respond to um, DMs that people are sending you. Because if you're just constantly on the fly with messages, you're going to drive yourself a little crazy. So that for me was a trial and error thing. I had to go through that to grow through that. <laughs> so you might have to too, but the, this is not a fire. Like it is not a fire. And as long as you can be diligent about your daily activities every day, you're going to get to it every day, you know? Um, okay. And number four is the most important thing. You guys let's freaking like move, like move around, like change our physiology and get up. Like, I want you to get up and move around. Cause this is the most important thing. I see all of you guys, Tina, Ashley, get your booties up. Annika, get up and move around, shake it out. Shake it out. Come on. All right. Love you guys. Most important thing, personal development. I'm telling you guys, please, please, please believe me. Cause this was something that I like faked it for a long time. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm doing personal development. And I was listening to like 15 minutes a day. No. And uh, you got to, got to, got to, got to do it every single day. Like get it in your life, whether you're listening to audible in your car, you're listening in the shower, you're listening while you're cooking, please get this stuff in your ears because here's the deal guys. Like we all have self-doubt. We all have these limiting beliefs that we've carried around in our lives for like, God knows how long we all have that like angel and devil on our sho shoulder. And when we're trying to do something new, and we're trying to succeed at something that we're like scared, we're nervous. Um, we don't know if we can do it. You know, we're just kind of like, we want to try. We need all of the like mental muscle that we can possibly get to overcome all the shit, you know, to overcome all the shit and give ourselves like the push that we need to be able to fight through those moments. So you are only as strong as the thoughts between your ears. And the beauty of this, the beauty of what we do here with personal development is that you can control these thoughts between your ears. Um, they can be sneaky. They can be like lingering subconsciously. You don't even know they're there, you know, dude, I'm not even gonna lie to you before I hopped on this call tonight. I was like, my heart was like pounding out of my chest. And I was like, you're not even nervous, Alicia. And my body was like, yeah, you are. <laughs> you sure are. So there's these, these thoughts that linger for us. We don't even know we're there. So do yourself a favor to be the best damn coach that you can be, to be the best damn version of you that you can be. Do your personal development. Do it. Do it. And do personal development that speaks to you and what you need currently in your life. Um, I had two beautiful lists for you guys of books to read in different categories. <laughs> so I will share those with you guys in Beatnik when I post the tracker at the end of this call so that you can see them. Um, but thankfully I did also create this and these are the, the top five books you should absolutely read as a new coach. So take a picture of this because you should definitely, definitely, definitely try to get through these books by the end of the year. If any of you guys finish all of these books by the end of the year, I will like, I will, but I don't know what I'll do. I'll get on a zoom with you and we'll like do boomerang workouts together. I don't know. We'll do something awesome. But if you read these five books by the end of the year, like, Hey, your brain's going to be in such a kick-ass fire. You're going to be sending your, setting yourself up for such an amazing 2022. Um, these are some of my favorites. Like truly, I think like every human on this planet should read these books. Um, one more that I do want to add to this though, is, uh, Jay Shetty's think like a monk. I read it at the, at the beginning of this year and it like kind of changed my life. So add that to your list too. It's a really good one. Okay. 
So I'm just about finished here. So my two biggest tips for you guys, clearly I'm very passionate about personal development. <laughs> so do some personal development. Like I said, we all have self-doubt. We all question, this is your armor. This is your armor. This is how you like are able to like shut out the haters. You're able to not take stuff personally. You're able to move forward from stuff that like you feel like you're at odds with in your business. This is going to save you because you have to be your biggest cheerleader in this business. You have to, you have to, it's on you. It's on you. It's not on your coach. It's not on like your husband. It's not on your kids. It's not on your best friend. It's on you to be your biggest cheerleader in this business. And this is where you get the tools to be able to do that. This is where you build yourself as personal development. Okay. And my number two tip is to work in those power pockets. Like whether it's a power hour or it's like power 10 minutes or, you know, whatever you need to do. I call them like the power tens for all of like my healthcare people. Cause I was literally working in 10 minute blocks in between my cases when I was in surgery for like freaking 15 hours a day. So focused, intentional blocks of time. Don't lie to yourself when you're doing this. Don't lie to yourself because you could be like, okay, I'm going to work for 10 minutes now. And then you scroll Facebook. We've all done it. I'm not judging you. I'm just saying, be very cognizant of your time and know exactly what the heck you have to do during that time and knock it out. Because I'm telling you that that is where your business is built, number one. And number two, it's going to make you feel like such a badass to have done it. You're going to be like, just did that, could have scrolled, didn't, can move on with my day and got like a brick in the building of my business. Um, okay. All right. You have this, my woman, you have this, you have this, take the leap, be okay with not knowing everything. The tracker is your saving grace here. As long as you're doing your tracker, you're doing the work, the unsexy work, these four vital behaviors, you're going to find your legs, your wings on the way down. I promise you that you will. So three things be the hardest worker in the room, be the hardest damn worker of the room, give the fight of your freaking life for this, be the underdog, be the underdog that I know that you guys can be, okay? Number two, trust this process. Trust this process. Know that all of us like that are going to be speaking to you on these calls, all of the top coaches you hear on the national wake-up call, um, anybody that you hear speak started exactly where you started, you know, as a coach, at fighting for Emerald, you know, fighting for um, Emerald again after some of their coaches dropped, you know, like we all, we all started in the, in the place where we're like, does this really work? Is this really going to happen for me? Like, uh, what am I doing? Like, is this girl just making money above me? Like, how is this working? You guys, we all feel like this. I'm telling you, we all feel like this. Trust the process of this journey. Trust the process of the work. Just like your health and fitness journey, have the discipline to do the unsexy stuff because that's where your magic's gonna happen. That's where your magic's gonna happen. You know that. You know when you fight through your workouts every day. You know when you stick to your nutrition plan. Over time, that's where you start seeing your results. So trust it here. Trust it here because you know that it works there. Trust it. Okay, and the last one, what is it? I told you guys to drop it in the comments, right? Be here in a year. Be here in a year. Good things take time, okay? Not a microwave. We're a slow cooker here. So water your seed long-term. Um, and I'm really excited to see where you guys are at next year. Like, seriously, I want you to A, reach out to me if you finish all five of those books by the end of the year. And B, I want you to reach out to me when you're a diamond coach. I mean, you don't even have to, because once you're a diamond coach, you're going to be part of our like fun club. And I'm going to like shout you from the freaking rooftops in there when I see you pop in, but message me anyway. Okay. I am your biggest cheerleader. I'm rooting for you outside of yourself. Um, any questions, comments, things that you guys want to talk about? I just will just quickly say I'm Jenny from St. Louis. You, this was amazing and totally like worth the hour of my time. I'm a new coach. I've got two people underneath me. Kristen Hackman is my coach, but I just thank you. This was so super helpful. And I just, this was amazing. That's all. I just want to tell you. Thank you. Oh my God, Jenny, you're amazing because I freaking hate public speaking. So I'm really glad that this helped you. <laughs> Do you guys have anything like, uh, anything open, I open the floor. 
Same. I have to say, Alicia, I got on late because of my son's basketball meeting, but I'm so like, I can't wait to even get the replay so I can get the first 25 minutes in. But this was absolutely just kind of golden for everybody to hear and rehear. And I think we put so much pressure on ourselves. I think that we always think it's more complicated. We want to overcomplicate. So it's so refreshing to hear. And then see Jenny too, you know, with my coach, Kristen, it's just amazing to be able to see all of this. So I appreciate you. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Jacqueline, you're a beast too. So to hear that from you, I'm like, <laughs> you guys are amazing. Okay. I just want to like holler at you all like Tina, Jenny, Ashley, Teresa, Annika. Annika, you're my freaking spirit animal. I just want to tell you that. Becca, Nikki, Lauren, Amanda, Sarah. Sarah, you're amazing for putting this together. You're a boss. Megan, Whitney, Tiffany, Courtney, Emma, Jasmine, Taylor, Amanda, Sarah, Sarah, Madison, Doran. I think I'm saying that right. Sarah O'Connor, love you. Pamela, Jackie, I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I like really, really appreciate it. You guys want to take a boom so we can like post this and blow up social media? I call it a boom. My success partner makes fun of me all the time. She's Canadian. So I think it's maybe a Canadian thing, but I'm like, it's a boom. You know what I mean? All right. Ready? Set. Hold on a second. Okay, ready, set, go. Amazing. You guys rock my face off. I will post that in Beatnik. I'll post all the things I said I would post in Beatnik and have an amazing night. Rock your freaking business. Print out that tracker. Like, get it rolling. Like, tonight. Tonight. If you're fired up, do it tonight. All right, love you. Bye.